I talked about Tom Cruise in a previous video, and I was curious how the Z News story got out. I know how we all found out about it. Most of us, the majority of us, found out about it through the South Park episode, Trapped in the Closet. But, like, how did the story get out? Because I hadn't heard about it before then, and as far as I know, it wasn't common knowledge. So I decided to look it up, and I ran through a couple of different sources. And then I went to where you shouldn't go to for information, but it turns out this is one of the rare times where Wikipedia actually has a comprehensive, you know, codex about how we lay people, us suppressive people, found out about Zeno. Zenu. So here we go. Despite the Church of Scientology's efforts to keep the story secret, details have been leaked over the years. OT3 was first revealed in Robert Kaufman's 1972 book, Inside Scientology, in which Kaufman detailed his own experiences of OT3. It was later described in a 1981 Clearwater Sun article, because you know they, they have a big church of Scientology down there in Clearwater, Florida. Uh, Florida and came to greater public fame in 1985 court case brought against Scientology by a guy named Lawrence Wallersheim. The church failed to have the document sealed and attempted to keep the case file checked out by a reader at all times, but the story was summarized in the LA Times and detailed in William Poundstone's Bigger Secrets, released in 1986, from information presented in the Wallersheim case. In 1987, a book by L. Ron Hubbard Jr., L. Ron Hubbard, Messiah or Madman, quoted the first page of OT3 and summarized the rest of its content. So apparently it's been out for a while. But again, before the advent of the internet, it unless it was made massively important by the media or by someone of you know public worth a lot of us didn't know i'm going to continue on since then news media have mentioned xenu in coverage of scientology or celebrity proponents such as tom cruise in 1987 the bbc's investigative news series panorama aired a report titled the road to total freedom with a question mark by the way which featured, featured an outline of the OT3 story in cartoon form. Now, I would really love to find that. So I paused it real quick. Hopefully the video you're seeing to this audio is actually the video, uh, the animated Xenu story as depicted by Panorama. <laughs> I really hope it is. <clears throat> On December 24, 1994, the Z News story was published on the internet for the first time in a posting to the Usenet news group Alt All Religion Scientology through an anonymous remailer. This led to an online battle between Church of Scientology lawyers and detractors. Older versions of OT levels 1 through 7 were brought as exhibits attached to a declaration by Stephen Fishman on April 9, 1993, as part of Church of Scientology International versus Fishman and Geertz. The text of this declaration and its exhibits, collectively known as the Fishman Affidavit, were posted to the internet news group Alt Religion Scientology in August 1995 by Arnie Lerma and on the World Wide Web by David S. Turetsky. This was a subject of great controversy and legal battles for several years. There was a copyright raid on Lerma's house leading to massive mirroring of the documents, the Barbara Streisand effect, and a suit against Dutch writer Karen Spanik, the church bringing suit on copyright violation grounds for reproducing the source material and also claiming rewardings would reveal a trade secret. And again, before the rest of us found out the truth of Scientology, these are the tactics that they engaged in now with scrutiny, but then almost with no one even paying attention and honestly law enforcement turning a blind eye. 
We'll continue on. The Church of Scientology's attempts to keep Xenu secret have been cited in court findings against it. In September 2003, a Dutch court, in a ruling in the case against Karen Spanik, stated that one objective in keeping OT2 and OT3 secret was to wield power over members of the Church of Scientology and prevent discussion about its teachings and practices. Despite his claims that premature revelation of the OT3 story was lethal, L. Ron Hubbard wrote a screenplay version under the title Revolt in the Stars in the 1970s. This revealed that Xenu had been assisted by beings named Chi, the Galactic Minister of Police, and Chu, the Executive President of the Galactic Interplanetary Bank, it has not been officially published, although the treatment was circulated around Hollywood in the early 1980s. Unofficial copies of the screenplay circulate on the internet. Again, they want to sue people for telling the secret now, but before he turned it into a full-blown religion, it was part of one of his sci-fi stories. This is why Scientology is so hardcore about its members not questioning its religion. <sighs> Finally, on March 10, 2001, a user posted the text of OT3 to the online community slash dot. The site owners took down the comment after the Church of Scientology issued a legal notice under the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. Now, critics of the Church of Scientology have issued public protests to spread the Xenu secret. This has included creating websites with Xenu in the domain name and displaying the name Xenu on banners and protest signs. In popular culture, versions of the Xenu story have appeared in both television shows and stage productions. The off-Broadway satirical musical, A Very Merry Unauthorized Children's Scientology Pageant, first staged in 2003 and winner of the Obie Award in 2004, featured children in alien costumes telling the story of Xenu. The Xenu story was also satirized in November 2005 episode of the animated television series South Park titled Trapped in the Closet. The Emmy-nominated episode, which also lampooned Scientologists Tom Cruise and John Travolta as closeted homosexuals, depicted Xenu as a vaguely humanoid alien with tentacles for arms in a sequence that has the words, this is what Scientologists actually believe, superimposed on the screen. The episode became the subject of controversy when the musician Isaac Hayes, the voice of the character Chef, and a Scientologist quit the show in March 2006, just prior to the episode's first scheduled rescreening, citing South Park's inappropriate ridicule of his religion. So, full-blown hypocrite. Hayes' statement did not mention the episode in particular, but expressed his view that the show's habit of parroting religion was part of a growing insensitivity toward the personal spiritual beliefs. And, in the media, that was also reflected in the Muhammad cartoon's controversy. Quote, there is a place in this world for satire, but there is a time when satire ends and intolerance and bigotry towards religious beliefs and others begin, unquote. Responding to the Hayes statement, South Park co-creator Matt Stone said his resignation had, quote, nothing to do with intolerance and bigotry and everything to do with the fact that Isaac Hayes is a Scientologist and that we recently feature featured Scientology in an episode of South Park. In 10 years and over 150 episodes of South Park, Isaac never had a problem with the show making fun of Christians, Muslims, Mormons, and Jews. He got a sudden case of religious sensitivity when it was his religion featured on the show. Of course, we will release Isaac from his contract and we wish him well, unquote. Comedy Central canceled the repeat at short notice, choosing instead to screen two episodes featuring Hayes. A spokesman said that, quote, in light of the events earlier this week, we wanted to give Chef an appropriate tribute by airing two episodes he is most known for, unquote. It did eventually rebroadcast the episode in July 19, 2006. Stone and South Park co-creator Trey Parker felt that Comedy Central's owners Viacom had canceled the repeat because of the upcoming release of the Tom Cruise film Mission Impossible 3 by Paramount, another Viacom company. Quote, I only know what we were told that 
people involved with MI3 wanted the episode off the air, and that is why Comedy Central had to do it. I don't know why else it would have been pulled, unquote. Now, interestingly enough, MI3, which now is seen as, honestly, the savior of the Mission Impossible franchise, it, if I remember right, didn't do as well as expected, had very little to do with the South Park episode and had a lot to do with Mr. Cruz jumping up and down on Oprah Winfrey's couch. Up to that point, Tom Cruise, his trajectory was only up. He was on the cover of magazines. He had had one hit movie after another after another. The first Mission Impossible was critically acclaimed. The second Mission Impossible was panned. Though a good movie, not a great movie, but though a good movie, it was a lot of style over substance. And it was a John Woo film, and it had John Wooisms all over it. But all in all, not a great Mission Impossible movie. Three, honestly, really saved the franchise. J.J. Abrams coming in and really setting the bar for what Mission Impossible has become after three. But it was honestly Tom Cruise becoming the butt of so many jokes because of the jumping up and down on the couch. I mean, that's honestly what did him in. So anyway, that is my little thing on Xenu. I took the majority of that information from the Wikipedia page dedicated to the story of Xenu. Like I said, I was just curious how it was really leaked. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. And hopefully you heard this commentary to the animated uh, panorama excerpt about Xenu. Have a great holiday. Later.